Hi friends, we want to welcome you to Marked by Prayer. This is the time that we get to join together to be sort of encouraged and inspired, um, a time in which we can draw closer to God because we remember that He is our hope. Even in a world that seems dismal at times, uh, God is our hope and our source of strength and comfort. And so today we're continuing in our series on the armor of God. Uh, yesterday we talked about the helmet of salvation and today we're continuing in Ephesians 6. This is verse 17 um, and we'll read that whole verse. It says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And you know, Raina, as I was um, thinking about the, the first thought that came to mind when I thought about the sword of the spirit, I don't have any swords at home, thankfully, <laughs> um, but I do have this really large knife. You know, one of my pet peeves is, um, you know, trying to do, uh, make a dinner recipe or, or cut vegetables for a salad and you pull out your knife and it's dull. Yeah, it squashes the tomato. And, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And um, recently my husband uh, purchased a knife for us to have at home and, you know, he was just kind of raving about this particular knife because it was made of Damascus steel. Okay. Um, and if you've ever heard about Damascus steel, it's supposed to be like, you know, one of the best kinds of steel and cut better and, um, uh, you know, it, it does work well, but it does have to be sharpened occasionally. Well, yeah, whether you have a great steel, Damascus steel, or, or just a regular everyday knife, you do have to sharpen it, right? And when we're talking about the sword, in this case, we're talking about the Word of God. And so I think it's a good illustration that we all know if we sharpen our knife in February, that if we pull it out today in August, chances are it's probably not going to be as effective. It's not one of those things where you read the Bible one time and you put it down and you say, okay, I'm good. No, you have to go back and keep sharpening and keep sharpening and keep sharpening. And so um, that's what I was thinking of when you were talking about the knife. Yeah, and you know, as we're talking about the, the armor of God, if, if you think about a soldier and a soldier is putting on all the different pieces of armor, the breastplate, and they, they have their shield and, and they put on their... Um, you know, the belt and all of the different pieces that will kind of help to bring protection for them. But if you think about how good is a soldier, how um, prepared are they for battle, if they have all of these, these um, things that they put on, but they have no sort of weapon. Oof. And yeah. for us as the people of God, um, you know, people are not, it, it, this particular passage talks about that our, our battles are not against flesh and blood. So I don't want anybody to hear that is that we're not saying that people are our enemy, mm -hmm. um, but we have an enemy of our soul um, that tries to discourage us, that tries to, um, you know, destroy and bring havoc into our life. Yeah. Um, and we need to have a weapon for us to be able to, to guard against that, to be able to have an offensive weapon and not just a defensive weapon. Yeah, yeah, because that's what it is. It is our offensive weapon. This is, this is the weapon. This is the weapon Jesus used in the wilderness with the devil every time the devil came to him. Um, he would go back with the word of God. And so that's what this is, is, is like. Um, you know, I was thinking too, as you said, that people aren't our enemy. Um, they're not. And so the word of God, learning how to use the word of God is very important too, because as you say, the Roman soldier has this sword, has this offensive weapon, but does he know how to use it? Um, with any weapon, you have to have training, right? You have to practice. Um, you have to know the, the, parts that might hang you up, the parts that you're good at, different things like that. So I think it's important too to remember that the word is used for correcting and rebuking and training. It's not to bash someone over the head, you know, it's not that type of right. weapon. So. Right, and you know, it's it's not enough to just have a Bible. We can have mm. a Bible and, and set it up on a shelf and it collects dust or it's, a, right. you know, it looks pretty and um, makes us seem uh, like we're spiritual. But at the end of the day, 
Um, if we don't know how to wield that weapon, uh, if we have no training in it, then it really doesn't do us much good. And so, um, you know, as you were saying, we may not have Damascus steel, or even with Damascus steel, you have to sharpen it. Still have it. to sharpen it, right? You still have to sharpen yeah. it. And the same is true of the Word of God. And it's important that we not just have a Bible, um, but that we actually know the Word, that we're in the Word, that we're sharpening our swords daily, that we're... Um, we're allowing it to correct and rebuke us and train us in righteousness, as you were saying. And so that is our prayer today, that we would be people um, who, who allow the word um, to really sink into our hearts, to read us um, and direct us in our daily lives. Yeah. Um, so let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it is timeless. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you that it speaks into our hearts and our lives today as much as it did thousands of years ago. And Father, we thank you that your word continues to read our hearts. It, it judges our thoughts and our motivations, Lord, and it helps us to see how we are to proceed in our everyday lives, whether at school, at work, at home, in our families, in our communities, with our friends, Father. And Lord, I pray that, that we would be people of your word, Lord, that we would um, go to your word, Father, at, on a daily basis, Father. And I pray that it would transform our hearts and our lives. We thank you um, and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us today. Together, we are called to be people of prayer, not people who are marked by fear. So thanks for joining us. Don't forget to like us, subscribe, or to share us on Facebook. See you next time.